well welcome to another edition of the venue video guides if you like large reservoirs ones with big fluctuations in depth and ones that are very natural and unpredictable then this might be a venue for you in this edition we're going to be looking at a fantastic venue that's very close to where I live in Sheffield and that is Dam Flask Reservoir Well if you've been an angler since you were very very young then I'm sure you can always relate to venues that were close to your home that you could get to before you could drive, before you had a car and this is one of those venues for me. I fished here a hell of a lot as a kid um, at junior level and intermediate level. They used to run junior matches up there as well and we used to go up there on the bus. It's about six or seven miles away out of um, Sheffield City Centre but there was a bus that used to run up there every two hours I think it was we used to go up there with our plastic seat boxes and it is a day ticket water but because it's such a big reservoir there are huge fluctuations in depth so as ever with venues like this location is very very important when you first arrive at the reservoir you've got the right hand bank and that's really referred to as the boathouse side now that is where they used to have the permanent pegs they used to run matches on here quite quite regular years and years ago and this is where the permanent pegs were that was like a permanent match stretch if you want to call it that but unfortunately they don't run matches there anymore there's just really one big match every year and that's known as the Pennine Championship as you get to the far end of that bank it then gets up to the neck end and this is the area where the fish generally go to spawn and it's as you'd expect it's where the river comes in that feeds the reservoir and that is where the shallower water is the road actually goes all the way around the reservoir so you can drive all the way around and then when you come back out of the neck end going back towards the open water we come to a stretch there what's referred to as the plantation now this is the transition period where it comes out of the shallower water and it gets down into the deep water and just on the edge of what they refer to as the bay is an area what they call the quarry and I've been through all that section with the fish finder and the deepest depths I've really found just there on that quarry is about 13 meters deep so it is it's a huge amount of water and that's why fish location can be so important depending on the time of year when you're actually going to go there just round to the right from the quarry you've actually got what's referred to as the bay and this is a very deep area it's a very consistently deep area very steep banks and as you can imagine depending on the water level it could determine whether you can actually fish this area or not and then when you come round from the bay as you go back towards the dam head that is where the ticket machine is located it is a day ticket water it's £4.90 for a full day ticket but they do have concession prices on there but they do also have the offer and the opportunity to get a two month ticket or a six month ticket so if you're you know you're able to get up there quite regular then that could work out a lot more economical if you're going to be having multiple visits as with all venues of this nature location can be key and that's why it's so unpredictable there are areas where it's really really deep but there are shallower areas as well so if you're going to be fishing there in the summer months you might want to tackle the shallower areas the ones going up around the plantation going up towards the neck end can be really popular and that's generally where the fish go to spawn so if you're heading there at that time of year then that might be the best place to go on the flip side of that if you're going to be going there in the colder months of the year then you might want to target the deeper water because that might be where the fish are actually hold up now it is classed as a natural venue even though it's a man-made reservoir so the stocking levels in there and the species in there are very similar to reservoirs of this same nature and depending on what you're targeting it might reflect in what kind of a tactic and approach you're going to adopt now there are lots of fish to be caught on float fishing tactics either with a waggler or the pole fish do come close in and that can really be a fantastic way of catching plenty of fish but as regards feeder fishing the type of gear that you might need really depends on the area that you're going to be fishing now if you're fishing in the deep water you often find that you don't have to go far out as far as i know i haven't seen any long range fishing on this reservoir so the maximum sort of ranges you might want to be fishing are between 40 and 50 meters so if you're targeting the shallower water so if you're around the plantation at certain times of year or going up towards the neck end 
So just a nice open cage feeder like that is ideal if you're not tackling the really, really deep water. Now, if you are gonna be tackling the deep water, you're better off doing that with a different sort and different style of feeder. The cage feeder can be great, just a normal side-weighted cage feeder can be great, just to get one or two fish in your peg and a bit of bait falling through the water. But when you're targeting areas that could be up to 12 and 13 meters deep, then you need a feeder that's a little bit more encapsulated to try and make sure that the ground bait is still in the feeder when it reaches the bottom. Any sort of an enclosed feeder, a simple plastic feeder like that is ideal. That sort of feeder is the same style that I've used when I've been up there. This particular one's 45 gram. And that's because, not because you're casting a long way, it's just because it's heavier, it's gonna get down to the bottom quicker. Because on some of the pegs, it might be taking 20 seconds or 25 seconds just for the feeder to hit the bottom. Other sorts of styles of feeders you might wanna try, ones that I've used up there are a bell feeder, they can be great feeders for this sort of fishing because they're, again they're so encapsulated and they can be good for speed fishing as well if you are catching the roach and perch or another type of feeder is the dome feeder something that's going to you know really protect all the bait um, and tr try and make sure it's intact for when it reaches the bottom so when you're tackling this deep water just have a think about the ranges that you're going to be fishing so you can catch fish in the shallower water closer in and for that sort of fishing you'll just need an 11 foot rod just coupled with a 3 or a 4000 style reel it's just matched perfectly with an 11 foot rod I use the XS Slim it's perfect on that sort of a venue as regards going further out 40 50 meters because it is um, in a bit of a rural location it can be prone and susceptible to the winds and it can be quite open as regards the weather so just be prepared to step up the weight of the feeder that you're using even if you're only casting 40 or 50 meters now for that sort of fishing I use a 12 foot rod I use the X C class it's perfect for that sort of fishing and like I say I've never really seen anyone have to cast at long range so a 12 foot rod coupled with a 4 or a 5000 reel is just perfectly matched for that sort of fishing. Really nice, simple fishing. Now as regards the tips that you might need, because it is so deep and there's quite a bit of depth, it's very, very rare for any sort of flow to uh, affect your tip or any sort of tow or undercurrent. Okay, so because it's deep, you can usually get away with one ounce tips on your shorter line, but on your longer line, a one and a half ounce tip is usually all right. But uh, in very extreme circumstances, you might need two ounce, but you certainly won't need to go heavier than that. I've usually gone up there on one of two occasions. One is to just go up there and fish for bites. And if you just want to do that and target roach, perch and skimmers as well, and just anything that swims, then you're far better off just going down a cereal type ground bait mix, just because it will catch you anything. It'll be nice and active, so it will attract roach and the fish that live higher up in the water. And if you're gonna fish like that, then just fish with smaller natural baits. Maggots, casters, and pinkies are ideal, just with a nice dry mix. And I'm sure you'll just, you'll get bites no matter where you fish, if you wanna fish just for bites. However, if you wanna fish for bream and the bigger fish, then I always go down um, a nice dark green fish meal mix. And again, I use chopworm. I mean, it's a typical bream bait, but I like dead maggots as well. But I have also caught on corn up there as well, which I think really is a good holding bait if you're targeting bigger fish. And I think if you are fishing in those extreme depths, then obviously light levels are a little bit reduced down there. And I think a nice bright bait that's gonna lay on the bottom for bigger fish is, is perfect for that sort of fishing. And I have caught bream on corn up there, so I'd always take a bit of corn if you're gonna be targeting those bigger fish. It's a very picturesque, rural, exciting and unpredictable venue. And that's the reason why I love it. The other thing is as well, it's very, very underfished. The last three times I've been up there, I've caught loads of fish and I haven't even seen another angler there. So it is a day ticket water. It's not for outside Sheffield. And if you've fished the venue, then please comment below and let other viewers know what your experiences of the venue were. The biggest thing I can say to you and the word of warning is if you are gonna go up there, you will need a wheel kit. The chances are you will have to walk to your peg depending on the access and where you decide to fish. And the other thing is if you are gonna go and use that ticket machine to get a day ticket, then you do need the exact change with you okay so make sure you've got plenty of coins 
on you. Simple as that. So if you have fished the venue, then please let us know below what you think to it. But it's a very charming venue. I love fishing it and I will be fishing and doing more filming up there for you over the coming months. So hope you've enjoyed this in bit of an insight into this video. If you don't want to miss out in any other the videos in this series, just hit subscribe right there. And if you want to see more coaching tuition style videos, then check out my other channel just there. So thanks for watching. Really appreciate you logging on and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video.